You are now tuned in to The Gifted Gab. Yes, 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 we're back. Another man. Another yeah. one, man. Long overdue. Very long overdue. Well, we here. We got our man, my man, AGP in the building. If you guys don't know, you about to put on notice right now the next 40 minutes because this guy is a staple in the community. You know, If you don't know, it's okay. I won't hold it against <laughs> you. <laughs> I will. I yeah, will. I will too as well, man. This is, a, this is a guy who's done a lot of big things in the community. Um, is a, I'd say a, a social... A social force, especially right now, a huge one. Mm-hmm. I mean, so it's, it's a pleasure to have you in the building right now. Founder of the Black Teachers Association. Co-founder. <laughs> Our queen, Sir Adamako Answers, name always needs to be mentioned. She's She has changed the dynamic. She's opened the doors, and she's bravely walked with me in this process. So shout out to queen, Sarah Adamako Answer. If you don't know how to pronounce it, please learn. Take some time. It's a beautiful name. And before we get started, I have to say, in the name of the Beneficent, the Benevolent, the one whom all praise is due, we give praise to you. Peace and love to Ja. Uh, rest in peace, DMX. Rest in peace, Black Rob. Rest in peace, Kobe and Gigi. Um, rest in peace, George Floyd. Rest in peace, Breonna Taylor. Rest in peace, everyone that we've lost from our culture. And it's because of you guys why we are working this hard to make society the best incarnation it's ever been in. So uh, peace and blessings to the Most High, to Jah. All praise due to Jah, always. Absolutely. You know, all praise due to the Most High. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, it's crazy how, like, (coughs) this time last year, like 10 months ago, you know, you gave a speech in front of the almost the entire city, man, you know. And you said something that really resonated with me. You said, you know, this is the city of brotherly love. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, ooh, I got chills. Yeah. You know, that's a bar. It a little differently. You know? Well, I mean, I don't know how it was for y'all, but like back in the day, you know, we'd always have that uncle come in from someplace you ain't seen him before. You only heard stories about him, but he always had a home at the crib to eat some food. And your mom or your pop, like they would, we'd, we'd set up a dinner and we connect and then once the brother left, you get an understanding of who they are, but you also understand where they come from. And then you also understand that when you get in that position, that's what you're going to do. I feel like collectively now in the city, especially with our generation, um, and we, there's some overlap between y'all generation and mine, like the, 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 the 30 to 40 plus the 20 to 30 in the mid-20s, where <clears throat> we're taking a lot of those principles we learned from our folks, from our culture, and we're giving it to society and saying, this is how we do things. And I think it's important for us to not only address that we are the city of brotherly love, but we have to prove that. Yeah. We can't just be like, you know, something bad happens to someone black and we get mad for one day and it's just us. It's got to be the whole city, like white brothers, Asian brothers, First Nations, Métis, Inuit brothers and sisters, everybody saying this is not acceptable in our city and it's not acceptable in any city. Mm-hmm. So... You know, with the whole George Floyd thing, it hit home because as us as black people, we're looking like, was well, our city going to protect us? Are, gonna, are they going to take care of us? Is the police going to be good to us? Or this situation that happened before, is that going to be rectified? Or where are our faces going to be? Um, and how can we help? Because I think it's time that we start listening to each other. I feel like the longest time we weren't listening to each other. It's just worrying. Why have the best idea? No, we have the best idea. Why don't we just <clears throat> merge that joint and take it to a table? And problem is because there's lack of representation at the table. So I think we need to do some more work in the city. We are the city of brotherly love, and I guess fellas like us and queens in the game, uh, we're going to commit to that. So, yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of it comes <coughs> down to community too. That's something that you're, you're big upon, right? You're, like, you're saying the, the culture is being passed down from your generation to us, you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of our duty to continue that. There was brothers in, in North, North, first of all, <coughs> Northside, Put that on everything from northwest, north central, northeast, Clairview, Castle Boogie Downs. We got Bannerman area, Dunluce. I played on every single street ball court in the north side and probably in the city. And that's just how we learned the game. And every time you would go to one of those open runs, there would always be an OG there. And the OG's looking out for you. Sometimes OG's going to say something like tough. And you got to listen to it. But then after he'll tell you why. And say, this is why we got to move this way or move that way. Or this is why you got to compose yourself a certain way because we're trying to protect you. So when it was my turn, 
I mean, I was young. I was really young. I started coaching at 17 um, at the Y. I listened to everything my OGs told me. And then I had my own little spin on it because, like, we had YouTube and we had different, like, avenues to reach people. So I took everything that my OGs in the basketball game and in the black community uh, and in the north side community, everything they taught me and just applied it to the new era. So community is number one for me. Like, North Edmonton, you know, there's that, that graveyard just right up on 82nd Street. Mm-hmm. That's where yeah. they're going to put me when this whole thing is done. Or, you know, hopefully when I'm 80 years old and my daughter and son, they both get married and live and I got my grandkids, that's where I want to be um, there or Jamaica or Grenada because that's where my roots are. So we're planting some roots. We're, 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 we're waiting for the trees to come, and we're going to make a beautiful garden. So this is where we are. Yeah, I mean, I love Northside Edmonton, man. Yeah, this, I was, this I was never been a Northside guy, man. It's the guy. T- it's people here are real. Yeah, whether you white, whether you Arab, whether you're 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 Chinese, Vietnamese, Filipino, you know, Ukrainian people from Northside are real. If they're upset, they're gonna be like, "Yo, I'm upset." Mm. You know, if they're sad, be like, "Yo, I don't really feel like chatting." But if you want to chat to me, we can figure something out. And when they're happy, be when Northsiders are happy, yo, you're going to hear us all the way in Ellerslie Road from Northside. You'll hear us when we're happy because we're a joyful community. We're, we're close-knit. We stand up for each other, and we stand up for the city. Yeah. And um, I'm just happy to be a, 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 small, a small piece in that type of work that we're doing to, to revitalize North Edmonton. So I love Northside. I have to tell everybody, Northside, you are my people. Um, I'm only doing this work because you guys showed me how to stand up when I fell down. So I love Northside, and I'm going to rep that until the end of time. So, AGP, I got a question for you because we had this discussion prior to uh, you came where you talked about the value of having an OG. Yes. You know, that's something that doesn't really get talked about much because, you know, sometimes we have good influences in our life. We have good guidance, but other times there's people that don't have that. So do you, what was the value in having people you could look up to? Well, first of all, I can't even just say it was like like OG fellas, like on a masculine level. There was queens out there that really protected the community Mm. and families and us. So shout out to the queens out there. But in terms of for the fellas who don't have it, this is why we're trying to create avenues for the culture in these institutions because if we try to do this work all on our own we're gonna get exhausted it's gonna be hard but our ogs did it and that's why we're doing it but we're looking at different strategies to embed that into the system like imagine we had a liaison in schools that was like something going on with so-and-so okay we're gonna send this person to make sure they straight or this person somebody passed away we're going to send this person from the culture who knows and they can connect with them, make sure their soul is in a good place. If we don't have those supports, then, of course, there's going to be challenges in the community. Things we're reading in a newspaper and people saying, oh, well, this community does, hasn't figured it out. Maybe we were asking for help a long time ago and waiting for it and it never came. And we tried to do it on our own and we got exhausted. What's the next steps? <laughs> What's the next steps for our city if we don't address certain challenges? So for me, having those guys like like Kino, like like um, JC, rest in peace, um, like Ryan Collerick, like J.R. Patrick, like my brother Steve, like Mustafa Setin, um, like just dudes in North Edmonton who looked out for the young brother when they saw him at the court, say, hey, you good? Oh, you could use my ball for a little bit or whatever, or I'm about to step out for a sec, but you stay here, wash my bag. Like, those are the little nuances from the culture that I think people weren't aware of until we actually started talking and sharing our stories. So the value of an OG is important, but we need to institutionalize that in some way, shape, or form, give it a title so that we can actually build a community to where it needs to be. Man, that's a bar right there. And I think for for context, I don't think, you know, for those of our, our, our viewers that don't know, you're a teacher at me. You know, you were on the front line. Well, I mean, and that was a choice. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That was that was intentional. That was when my hero, Tom Elniski, w- who was one of the greatest, if not the greatest, um, hero um, leaders, mentors for, for black youth, for Asian youth, for East Asian youth. Um, and he was a white man who actually just said, you know, I know these kids are black. I know they don't look like me, but those guys are my sons. And if anybody's talking about my sons, 
I'm going to stand up for them. Number two, I'm going to fight for them. Number three, I'm going to make sure that they're good even after high school. So I had that in my life. I was in some trouble in high school, mm. and I had to figure some stuff out. And that man said, well, how you want to be remembered? And then I said, shoot, I don't know. I'm 17 years old. I don't know why I want to be remembered. Hey. And he said, well, do you want to be remembered as a... As a, as a kid who wasted all of his opportunities, who was just hanging out at the mall and, you know, had all this talent and didn't do nothing with it and didn't even come up, couldn't even come back to the block with his head high, or do you want to you wanna be like a king? And I said, I said, shoot, I want to be a king, Mr. E. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to do something for our block. I want to stand out. I want to, I want to play the game. I want to do what they said I couldn't do because I got in trouble. You know, I got written off. Like, <laughs> man, I had like six scholarships on deck, gone. Mm -hmm. I got in trouble. And then the principal, Rod Smith, Mr. E, and my parents, we just kind of worked out a plan. And I did community service and stuff. And then I started understanding that life wasn't just about my individual goals. It was about us as a collective trying to build. So um, I went off on a tangent there. But it's because when I talk about my hero and the people like that, those are the people we need to start uplifting facts, in facts. education. These are the people that need to start being at the forefront, uh, yeah. the leadership positions, the principals, the the intendants, the people who understand the value of connecting with communities that aren't just your own. Yeah. Um, the people who understand empathy and love and caring and compassion. And not only that, like restorative justice, not just, you know, we're going to penalize these brothers who did something wrong and that's it. No, they them brothers are gonna come home at some point. It's interesting because you're you're a walking testament to how these attitudes are are trickling down or how they're taught, right? You know, a lot of bad attitudes are taught, but also good ones, right? So, um, just to talk about this this recent incident that that's going on, these are kids, right? Young kids, you know. what I'm saying, I remember at, at that age when I was maybe ten, eleven, twelve, I was doing things that a lot of my environment did for me like they dictated a, a lot about how i would operate and how i move right sink or swim sink or swim fight yeah. or flight yeah charles darwin mm. and all that other stuff um you're in a position where you feel you're in a corner facts and in some cases you're in a corner that no one even else knows about so when you walk into an open area you, you you're upset yeah you're mad you don't have those supports in front of you um, when you request them, it's difficult to take them because you're wondering, are these folks really caring about me or are they just, you know, check mark? Yeah. We talk to the kid, you know, like, are they following up? Um, have you reached out to community? These are things that that not just for the black community, every community needs this. We need people who are going to look at those kids who are going through a lot and saying, OK, how do we build them back up? Thanks. How do we build them back up into human beings so that they don't hold any grudge and be like, well, this happened to me one time, so I'm going to go ride up on these people. No, that's not what we want for our youth. We want our youth to look at their ways and be like, damn, I was looking at it the wrong. I was doing it this way? Oh, hell. No, 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 no. I got to try it this way. Facts, facts, what the brother facts. showed me, what the sister showed me. And then from there, 10 years, they're the mentors mm -hmm. for the next generation of kids. Mm -hmm. So we got to look at different strategies. That's that's my thought process. But again, I mean, I'm just one teacher. Um one mentor, one coach, and there's lots of people committed to this work. So, you being in the institutions, um, on the front line, are we going through a shift right now? Is there is there change Absolute, on the horizon? What I'll question, but I'll tell you where it's coming from. It's coming from the teachers. The teachers, the teachers are looking at the world. They have a a different lens, a different lens than how power structures were created before where unfortunately for some power structures, the further away from it in terms of a hierarchy, the less it means something to you. But for the teachers, you're right there. You're seeing the kid coming in saying, I watched a video last night of a, 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 a black man who looked like my uncle. He was 30 yeah. something yeah. and there was a knee on his neck and I don't know what to do. And the teachers are sitting down and saying, that's not my community, but I want you to tell me everything so I can understand yours so that I can help it. And this year alone, we've had civil justice groups created, black student associations created, anti-racism committees created, mm -hmm. and a lot of them are being done by people don't look, that don't look like us because they're understanding that this is a challenge. And they're looking at the kids in the classroom and saying, I'm not letting that kid come to school tomorrow sad. Mm -hmm. 
It's I'm not letting that kid come tomorrow after we had this conversation sad. I'm going to do what it takes to help that little kid because I know that one day this kid, they're going to feel that and then redistribute that to society. So teachers are doing the work. Now, as far as other places, this is my humble suggestion. I think it's time to start listening to teachers. Um, I think it's time to remove our egos. I think it's time to not be in love with the positions or titles that we've had, where whether we're the super this or the assistant that or the principal that or whatever. Those titles are important, yes, but those titles are not who you are. You're a human being. And if you consider yourself a human being, it's time to stop thinking about, well, this position I have and the money that I make or how other people address me because I have this position it's time to look at the world as if this is a human in need and I'm a human and I can help. I like how you said that it's changing from the teachers, right? It's a, it's a top down, but I also think it's important to note that there's a difference between changing things systemically and changing the people that operate within that system, right? Yes. You, can, you can have a system that is changed. You could put in policies and stuff, right. but it wouldn't make a difference if the people that are operating within it don't care. Well, it's what performative, if, right? Well, what if the people who are in it who are actually bringing strategies are ignored what if you're dismissed what if what if you make suggestions in a timely manner and you follow the 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 path that they've they've given to you they said well you have to go through this channel and this channel and this channel and then things will change and what if you tried that strategy even though you knew it was wrong what if you tried that strategy and it didn't work and then said well can we try our strategy now mm. and then people said well, I don't know who you are. I, 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 I don't have time. We don't have money. We don't have resources. When you know for a fact there are time, <laughs> there is time, <laughs> there is money and resources because we've been investing it the entire time largely yeah, without yeah. institutional support. So, um, and I have to say this, there, this is a, this is a, a macro challenge, uh, but it starts somewhere. If, if law enforcement changes in this direction, can education change? Can business change? Um, can community leagues change, but you have to be open to change. And that's the number one uh, takeaway is that people need to start being open to change. Um, because if not, then look what they did in the United States, HBCUs. HBCUs, you know what I'm saying? And they did a great <sighs> job and they bring the community together. They educate, yeah. they're funded, they're, yeah. you know what I mean? And I love, I love seeing those marching bands. I've and, always wanted to go to you know, and, and, and that's you know, And for me, like, both of us, Played at U of A. Yeah. But I don't think people recognize how trailblazing it is to be like a black athlete in, in, in some of these institutions that were traditionally maybe 30 years ago didn't have our faces. Yeah. So I'm when we way. come in, we have a story that is so important. And I think that story is a little bit more important than just, well, this guy got this amount of stats or this guy, you know, was the number one prospect. Um we have stories. Those stories are important, and those stories are going to get people to go to these institutions and diversify them. Um, unfortunately, if folks don't want to share those stories, then we're going to be in those same situations where it's like, well, there's a brother here and a brother there. And um, I don't think we want to do that anymore. I think we want to see all of our faces. I don't know. I think we can learn from everyone if we do. It's crazy because when you're just talking about, you know, going to U of A, when you're, when you're talking about stories, our stories are often highlighted more. Like, well, there's more of a responsibility for us to act a certain way or to to be a stand-up person because there's not many of us. The, the, you know what I'm saying? It's, when it's, I, no, go ahead, brother. No, 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 keep going, no, keep going, keep going. No, no, no. So, so keep going. like, I had a conversation with somebody um, who uh, – was involved with a with a college slash university basketball program and in that conversation i said <clears throat> do you think it's a good idea to highlight black history within uh this team and the person kind of said well i don't know if i can do that and this that and this but i'm like but you are very comfortable posting the highlights from these players mm. so if you can post the highlights the things that make that program look good can you also talk about the history that existed um, in, in, in that sporting organization? And literally, I was left on red for friggin' 10 months. I was left on red. And the whole time, I was just like, bro, it was a really good suggestion. It was a really good suggestion. You could have done 28 days of here's how um, our sporting institution has 
uh, had these leaders from black communities and they're from Montreal, they're from British Columbia, they're from Edmonton, they're from Okotoks, Alberta, they're from United States. Um, we could we could highlight that. And then when people see that, they're like, well, this is an inclusive environment. They allow these people, not even allow, these people have the power to tell their stories and there's no oversight and they could say how they feel and talk about their communities. I want to go there. Mm. I want to go to that school. Instead, it's like, <clears throat> well, here's a game winner. Yay. Where's the brother from? We don't know. So I don't like that. And I, I didn't want to go on a tangent because I know there's lots of organizations and sporting teams that are doing this stuff. I just think that, hey, guys, next year or next month, take these ideas and they're for free. <laughs> You're for yeah, free. Like, this, this is for this free. That's why we brought you on, man. <laughs> 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 the get the gap might have to get a piece of that. Trust me. Piece right. of action. No, right. but what you're saying is important, man. Like, the stories of how we got to certain places moves the culture because it's going to, you know, encourage other brothers that look like us to take a leap of faith, to bet on themselves, to go places, and to. I like where you're going. This is good. You know, to implement <laughs> some change and. and be you know the catalyst in in shifting culture maybe not just in your neighborhood right but in another place that you're not even familiar let, with let, let's talk about u of a let's talk about i'm it. gonna put it on the table okay the first black brother that played for u of a his name was ed joseph he went to emmy lizard high school he was from ontario his dad came to alberta for work sounds like our story <laughs> he came to alberta for work and the boy was playing ball and football. The Edmonton Eskimos wanted him on the team. That's crazy. But he was like, I'm going to play basketball. Yeah. He was the first. I know this. I know this. The second brother died in Clayton Pottinger. Mm. Clayton Pottinger brought the championship home. Yep. I see I see his frame hanging in the in the locker room. It's still tip. Craziest story about Clay Pottinger. When I was a kid, I was like five or six years old. My family said, we got some guests coming over. They said, one of the brothers plays basketball. But the dad was friends with, my, like, my mom and the fam. Mm. You brother walks through the door. I said, who this tall brother with a box cut? <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I said, who this tall brother with a box cut? And then, and then we, we got to talk and this and that and this. And then my dad said, um, yeah, I know that's Mr. Pottinger and his son. I met him when I was five, six years old. And when he was like that brother for U of A, another brother was watching him play. And his name was Stephen Parker, my brother. And my brother watched Clay Pottinger get it done and said, I'm finna bring a championship. And he did it in 2002. Yep. And then when I saw my brother do it, I took my tattoos. At the time, I had braids. You know what I'm saying? I seen the pics, man. I seen the pics. I seen the pics. Uh, 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 my queen was from Nigeria. You know what I'm saying? I listened to hip hop and reggae, and I invited all of those minds that were on the team, whether you was white, whatever, to my block, Northside, for the biggest jump off. We used to throw the biggest jump offs in the city at Northside, and everything was free. The food was free, the beverages was free, the family needs sleep over, you sleep over, you had DJs, all of that. And then after that, there was this kid named Sarsafa, Matt Cardosa, Kenny Otiano. British Bulldog, Ethan Dixon, Mamadou Gaye, Joel Friesen. And I'm talking to one of the brothers who went to U of A as well, Andre mm -hmm. Kelly. Now, do you see how that started with one brother and his dad moving to a province? He didn't know nobody out here. Starting from scratch, and the boy is playing basketball and football. And the whole time when he's in the gym playing, the crowd may not look like what he looks like, but there's a black kid in the corner watching that brother play. And he's saying, I'm going to do that one day. Mm. And that's what our role is. And it's tough because it's a hard role because you, 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 you're in that position. If you, if, you, if you curse the ref out, then they're going to talk about it forever. Exactly. If you get a technical foul, they're going to say this. If, if you use different words, they're going to say that until the culture started to shift. And the culture started to shift by some of us saying, hey, brothers, come, come play. Mm -hmm. Let's play ball together and let's... Let's make this institution what it is. So UV has a rich history of black history in sports. I only talked about basketball, but the contributions made by those brothers inspired me, and it made me want to do more.
uh, than just be a ball player. It made me want to 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 introduce people to my community, to put on tournaments, mm -hmm. to put on camps, and bring in brothers such as yourself. And and Doza's been out there, and he's been giving speeches to the kids. And big tall Brett Brett Rock, Rock <laughs> it, he came through, <laughs> oh, and man. we're trying to bring that U of A to the brothers in the north so that they know they can get there and do whatever they want to do. So crazy story, y'all, crazy. But it started with Ed. Ed was the first. And when I went to nationals, Ed and Clayton, they called me. They called you? They called me on the phone. What'd they say? They said, brother, be ready to get this thing. Try your best. Yeah, yeah. No, I was there. It, it was the words of encouragement yeah. that the brothers would give you, the OGs. And I was in a hotel, and I would tell my teammates after. I said, man, Ed called me. Clay called me. I felt good. I was like, man, I'm here. Like, I'm here when my brothers did it. You know what I'm saying? We weren't able to win the chip, but that, I'll never forget when Clay called me and Ed called me. Um, Leroy Gentles called me. And mm. just check in how you doing. Like it's it's the equivalent of me hopping in y'all yeah, yeah. joints and, and and giving you a, 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 a like a, a comment or something. That that's something you've been doing, and you know you're, you're known for that. And we appreciate that here at the Get the Gab. But a lot of what you're talking about is inspiration, man. Inspiration makes a huge difference, not only in sports but in the community and in institutions as well. But you know, someone for me, like as a, as a hooper, when I see those influences, I've seen people ahead of me. I kind of model my myself after that. You know what I'm saying? It all goes back to what we were talking about with OGs and whatnot. Right. It all trickles down, right? It, it, but it, I think what's very unique, too, is that's a blueprint. Mm -hmm. But when you're able to take the blueprint and then add your own pieces. That's so my it, brother man. was 6'2". He had one tattoo. And I was 6'5". And I had, like, 15. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and the craziest part is my oldest brother, he, he wasn't, like, we weren't allowed to have... We weren't even allowed to have a box cut that Clay came in with. Yeah. We couldn't even have a little ponytail in the back. We, 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 he, my oldest brother never got a tattoo. It was a different time because, you know, in that day, when you had tattoos, man, statue, you was a shot thing. You know, like, mm -hmm. you know, it was, a, it was a different type of, 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 uh, of atmosphere. But, um, but it, everything that I learned was from my, was from my elder statesman. And my goal was always to honor them. And that's why even this work with the Black Teacher Association and stuff like that, it's about honoring our, our yeah. culture and yeah. our heroes, our elders who had fought for things and maybe didn't have some of the supports that we have now. And um, we're going to do that. And it's, again, I just have to say, it's not just for the black community. We want y'all to understand us so we don't run into these issues anymore. Yeah. Oh, hello there. We interrupt the schedule of programming with an important message. You can now text the gifted gap. 647-424-5345. Ask us anything and stay in the loop with merch, giveaways, new episodes and exclusive content. And when I say ask us anything, I mean anything. No, really, anything. What to buy your significant other for your anniversary? Are you shopping for your boyfriend? Do you want to make mom happy? We don't have all the answers, but we have some. Okay, so from the culture to y'all, um, I was always told, you know, when you come to somebody's crib, you break them off something, whether that's a beverage, whether that's, uh, I don't know, food. But I want to bring y'all my official joints. Hey, so I got man, you oh, man. Ooh. Let's that's get it. Is appreciate and I thought it was man. just us two, brother, but I got some more. Holy so you got this joint, Jeez. and I got the black joints for it's the tough. kids. If you know any kids in the community, we got we got these for them. So this is y'all's. Um, this is my first ever. Yeah, this is. Let me let me get that joint on there, man. So this is my first camp. Um, been running it for seven years, and then you know COVID happened, so we had to shut it down. But uh, it's all about motivation. Yeah, it's not just about basketball. So we bring in different guest speakers. Uh, Jermaine Buckner's been there. I do. I do. bogax has been there. But this is y'all's. So you, I just bro. want you guys to know that we got your back. And you find two little youngsters in the community and give them them small ones because that's a part of this too. Your that's kids, a part man. of this. I got too. you, man. So huh? Here you go. Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, talking about, bro. I'm gonna I be nice now. I don't know what he's talking about. Bro. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking man, about. Man. I appreciate you, man. Thank yeah, you, man. man. You know, yeah. it's it's uh, it's big to see. You know, when I first met you, I think we was uh, doing a clinic over at, at me. Word, that's right. Yeah. Holy, yeah, you a got long good time memory, ago, man. That was a long time ago, man. It was a long time. You ago, know, <laughs> and that's like you know, here's a brother, like, take space. Yeah. You know, 
a lot of times as black people we don't take up the space that we deserve you know what i'm saying we we, we shy shy away from a lot of the opportunities that we're overqualified for that we should the rooms that we should be in and here i saw I was a brother taking the space he deserved you know here's this you know here's his community he puts on for his community he interacts with every single individual and for me i was like yo that was the type of representation i saw i'm like I, I, I think I spoke to you for like five minutes. I'm like, this guy makes an impact in this community. Yes. I didn't even have to. I didn't have to see the resume. I didn't have to see anything. You felt it. You feel it in the energy, and I'm man. sure anybody watching this can feel that. In I energy, appreciate man. you, like even just hearing that. That that means a lot. Um, and I mean, that's what God called us to do. You know what I'm saying? Um, whether you believe in Allah, peace and blessings upon Him, or Jesus, you believe in Jah. You know. Um, or bust, as they say in Black Panther, <laughs> um, bust be upon us. But it's some things are deeper than your job. Um, I never considered working at ME my job. Um, I considered it my service. Um, the, the interactions I had with my students were incredible. We did this thing called Thankful Thursday where we sit we sit around in a room, all 30 of us, we put the chairs um, facing each other, and each person, we get like a, like a totem or something they can hold so that everyone knows that you're watching this person while they speak, and we're not talking, we're hearing what they got to say. And the first thing we say is, what are you thankful for this week? <clears throat> These kids, one kid said, man, I'm thankful that my mom came back from the hospital. She was in there for a minute. Other kids said, you know, my dad died, but my brother's been my road dog, so I'm thankful for him. Other kids said, you know, I'm thankful for my boyfriend because I was getting bullied back in the day, but now he's at my school, so now he's making me feel good. And then one kid said, I'm thankful for Mr. Parker, and I had to stop them because I got emotional. And I, I said, well, don't thank me. I'm thanking you guys because you guys are the future, and just being able to hear your voices and knowing that we're having this conversation. I know there, I know society is going to be better guaranteed with these interactions. And I was, I was thankful that I was there. Now I could have thrown in that I'm Jamaican and that I'm black and that I'm a ball player and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, we're just people sharing stories. And these kids were, they were amazing in how forthcoming they were with each other. And at the end of it, we clap for each person if if we need Kleenex, we give them Kleenex. If they need to, like a couple people, are like I'm not ready. I said that's okay. We'll go around, and when you're ready, you can. And if even if you're not ready, we can revisit it. You can write something up. You can put it. And then we went straight to social media and said on on Twitter, we said this is who I'm thankful for, mm -hmm. and we put it out into the world so people could see what these kids are going through. And I feel like as a culture in our school at Emmy Lazert, that made us stronger. It made us stronger. So every Thursday we do Thankful Thursday. That's something I miss because I left my job. I left my job to pursue supporting the culture. And it was one of those things where I was like, my home or or the culture needs representation. And I took on a job. I didn't know nothing about a job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know nothing about that <laughs> job. <laughs> I just, but the way that it kind of rolled out, it was like, well, there's there's one black woman there. And there are no black men there. And I was just like, I may not have all qualifications, but I will work so hard. I will work so hard just so that I could be there, just so they could say, well, now there's two. Mm. I want, so, I want yeah. to add on to that, man, because, you know, we're talking about representation, but we're also storytelling a little bit. So let me add, let me add a little bit, man. Let me, let me get the campfire going. Um, the first time I ever met you, man, I was on a visit here. I was visiting U of A. I like these stories. We were playing... <laughs> We, they were playing. I remember they were playing you, Vic, and you were you were in the crowd. I know exact. You know exactly where your seat is every single time, right behind the bench on the right side. So, you know, I'm I'm on, here on a recruit. I'm like sitting maybe a couple seats ahead of you, but I I felt your energy just as soon as I met you. I remember uh, my coach introduced me to you, but right off the rip, because I didn't see a lot of people that looked like me. I met you. I, all my comfort was was right there. Like I just felt this sense of like belonging. You know what I'm saying? And what Alex was saying, when you see people that look like you in different rooms, it makes the, the, the whole situation a lot smoother, a lot better. But that's something that, you know, I, I'm, I can't be 
more thankful enough to, to have experienced that with you. You know what I mean? I want to tell you something. You of A. When, when you play the game, you play the game, two-hour game, and then at the end of the game, and then you, there's a dad who will come. Yeah. With their, with their black daughter or black son. And the dad will say, you know, I want a picture, I want a high five, or I want to meet you. And I look at that dad. Number one, I say, thank you for bringing them here, right? Number two, I say, please stay connected because those two babies being here, that means the world to me. That means that I'm in the right place. I'm in the right place. I'm doing the right work. This game is bigger than just the dunks that I do or yeah. the crossovers that I get. Me being here and being able to talk to that dad, and it was like every weekend we meet a new family, a new black family. And you meet lots of white folks. You, yeah, know, yeah, yeah. you meet lots yeah, of white folks. Everyone, lots of brown, yeah. You meet everybody at U of A, but when you see that black family coming in, I'll never forget those families, man. And uh, when I saw you doing it, I was like, this is the work. This is the work. So I'm always so proud of you guys, man. All my Golden Bears, my GB Nation, the Black Bears, the Air Bears, all of us. Um, we're doing the work. And I, I can't wait till them boys get back on the floor. You know, and I'm going to tell you right now, Mr. Barnaby Craddock, I wouldn't mind coming and coaching with y'all. So uh, let's see if we can't get back to the championship and do some community outreach. So that's me shooting my shot, as you youngsters <laughs> say. <laughs> Oh, man. Man. Yes. But who knows? Maybe one day we could do it, you know. But I'm Yes, sir. You heard it here first, man. Andrew Parker. Uh, any last remarks? You know, I know you've been busy with uh, you know, everything going on in the city. Right. Is there any messaging you want to get across for anybody listening? I do you challenge anybody. I do. <coughs> when you lose, learn. After you learn, teach. After you teach give and after you give save and after you save build our community right now is asking the city of edmonton to try another way we we've seen how things have been done we know that it worked for a time but we're ready to lead we're ready to lead in every aspect money <laughs> like businesses education politics we're ready to lead and don't be afraid don't don't feel like we're gonna come back on you or do anything like that we our culture is so beautiful that we understand how to heal and i think that's something that not only canada needs the united states needs the world needs to heal and the only way we're gonna heal is by learning from our losses and then from there learning to teach and then by teaching, learning to give and to save and to build. So um, that's where I'm at. I want to give a shout out to my family, to Q and Z, to my queen, Nami Sango, um, to my queen's queen, Jaja, to my mom, Dr. Claudia Parker, who's been the greatest mom in the world, <coughs> and my brothers. And one last thing, Northside. <laughs> North side forever. <laughs> I, know you could, I know you couldn't leave without doing that, bro. I was waiting for that one, man. I was waiting for that one, bro. My guy. Oh. Appreciate you, dog. Bless you, King. Thank you. Love y'all, brothers, man. man. Love y'all, man. Yeah. You guys know what to do. Make sure you guys tap in. Tap in with Andrew Parker. He's doing some big things over with the Black mm -hmm. Teachers Association. And, you know, tap in with us to Gifted Gab. Text us. You know what it is. You got new numbers now, man. You got numbers, man. We're back. We're here for the culture. Aye. Just like that, yo, we gone. Blessings. <laughs>